one weapon would revolutionize the war at sea, the submarine, or U-boat, as the Germans called it. When war began, the British Navy had more submarines than Germany. Life on board was in stark contrast to the big battleships. To me, it was uh, claustrophobia, or whatever they call it. You know, I didn't like, I liked to be where I could get out. I didn't like to be closed in. And submarines were terrible, really. They were small and, and so vulnerable. It was all volunteers. Reason to get a shilling a day extra. And there wasn't many submarines, so they didn't want a lot of men to volunteer. But as they went further on, they got more, and they had to go in them. I didn't want to go, but they had to go. But after we saw them after, they were delighted. And the submarine, they're all as one, you see. You're the Lieutenant Armand Stoker. We both worked together, because you get hit, you've got to know what to do, you see, in a submarine. The British used their submarines for patrols in support of the surface fleet. The German U-boats would have a totally different purpose. They became the lone hunters, and they gave Germany its one truly effective naval weapon of the war. Much of a U-boat's lonely time in the ocean was still spent on the surface, allowing moments of peace and calm. After an excellent supper on the fresh fish given to us by our fishermen friends, we were glad to clamber up on the Cunning Tower to enjoy the northern evening air and a cigar. Grey and violet hues replaced the shining glow of sunset. Underneath the water, as the U-boat went in search of its prey, life became very different. The atmosphere below was really beyond description. An appalling burst of heat flung me backwards. The thermometer stood at nearly 45 degrees Celsius. The men were standing over their engines in the bare minimum of clothing, and their drawn, gaunt faces, smeared with oil and filth, looked like skulls. In September 1914, this new underwater threat showed its murderous potential. Three aging British battleships, the Abu Kir, Hogue and Cressy, were sunk in a single day by one German U-boat. A British midshipman wrote home with the remarkable story of his survival. Dear Granny, I had a most thrilling experience. We were woken by a terrific crash and the whole ship shook. The Abakia went down suddenly and we slid down her side into the water. I swam to the Hogue and was just going on board when she was struck and sunk in three minutes. I then swam onto the Cressy, where I had a cup of cocoa. But as I finished it, she was struck. I jumped off again. I was picked up, having been three hours in the water. 1,400 other sailors lost their lives. The U-boat was able to sneak up on its target without being seen. But when it came to merchant shipping, this unique quality of surprise presented a legal and diplomatic problem. Under international law, an attacking warship of any side was first required to stop a merchant ship, board it, and inspect its cargo. If the cargo was found to be assisting the enemy, the attacker was required to allow the merchant crew to leave their ship safely. Only then could they blow it up. Of course, stopping vessels and going through this rigmarole was inimical to the advantage that the submarine had in attacking merchant shipping. It was a sneaky weapon, a damned un-English weapon, it had been called by one British commentator. Frustrated U-boat commanders began to bend the rules, sinking merchant ships without warning, but claiming that their targets were carrying munitions, or even that it was the British doing the sinking, not them. German propaganda films tried to convince the world that they were still sticking to the law, even towing merchant crews to safety. 